it's indistinguishable from a real person when viewed from an aerial perspective. When viewed from the air, it mimics the conditions that a, a UAS pilot will face during actual emergencies. And that was important to me. Again, you want to train for the situations that you'll face in real life, right? You don't want to, you don't, no one ever searches for a shirt when search and rescue. You're listening to the Drone Radio Show podcast, the show about drones and the people who use them for business, fun, and research. Hosted by Randy Goers. Hello, everyone. This is Randy Goers, and welcome to the Drone Radio Show podcast, episode 406. How can we make search and rescue training more real? For that question, we head to Naples, Florida to speak with Roger Hall, CEO and founder of 2D Dummies. 2D Dummies is reshaping the future of public safety training with their patent-pending two-dimensional rescue mannequins. Designed to precisely simulate the physical attributes and thermal signature of a human body, the 2D Dummy is the ultimate solution for heightening the authenticity of training drills for public safety professionals. The two-dimensional mannequins have been used to enhance UAS search and rescue teams in a variety of training scenarios, including firefighting, law enforcement, and military settings. Roger is a retired firefighter with a 25-year career in New Hampshire and a passion for aviation. Holding both FAA Part 107 Remote Pilot and Part 106 Sport Pilot Certificates, Roger transitioned into the field of unmanned aerial systems after retirement. As one of Dart Drone's first UAS instructors, he has trained over 1,000 individuals and co-developed their Part 107 and public safety training programs. Always seeking to introduce reality into his training sessions, Roger developed a 2D dummy as a prop. Continued refinement and feedback led him to produce a lifelike 2D dummy that enhances public safety UAS search and rescue training. In this edition of the Drone Radio Show, Roger talks about how 2D dummies are used in public safety UAS training and how they can enhance search and rescue capabilities and build emotional resilience within organizations. But before we hear from Roger... I want to stress that your support is the heartbeat of my podcast. Every episode is crafted with you in mind, and your generous donations ensure I can keep delivering the content you love. Whether it's the price of a coffee or a more substantial contribution, every bit helps to defray the cost of production. Donate today and be a vital part of the podcast's continued journey to greatness. And for a limited time, donate $100 or more, and receive an official Drone Radio Show coffee mug. To donate, go to droneradioshow.com slash donate. And if you can, please subscribe to the podcast on your favorite platform and leave a nice review and rating on iTunes. It really helps improve the podcast ranking among the many thousand of active podcasts today. So let's learn how two-dimensional dummies can enhance public safety UAS training with Roger Hall of 2D Dummies. Let's pick up the interview where I asked Roger to introduce himself. Hi, I'm Roger Hall, owner of 2D Dummies. Roger, tell us about 2D Dummies. What does the company do? 2D Dummies is a new company and we manufacture realistic and lifelike training aids for public safety drone teams. It's a first of a kind product in the world. We make props as well as mannequins mostly for public safety search and rescue training. Can you describe the product for us in a little more detail? So it's a two-dimensional mannequin, a rescue mannequin. And on one side of the mannequin is a high-definition image that simulates a person in um, need of help. So we have them positioned in certain ways that you would typically find a missing person when doing a search and rescue mission. The unique feature about the 2D dummy is that on the reverse side is a proprietary film that mimics the heat signature of a human. So that allows the 2D dummy to be used for both optical drone training and thermal drone training, which is really valuable for public safety teams, as you can imagine. Why did you create the 2D dummy? 
Well, I was fortunate enough to be hired by Dow Drones in 2015, even before Pot 107. I was one of the country's first public safety UAS instructors. And when I started teaching these police and fire departments, what typically we would do at that time is we would lay out a, like a, a shirt and a pair of pants. You know, I borrowed some from my wife and we lay them out. And that was the target that we searched for. And I really felt it was inadequate and didn't really represent what a UAS pilot would typically be looking for at an actual search and rescue mission. And knowing the value of scenario-based training and how much of a role that realism plays in it, I just knew there had to be something better out there. And um, it started a passion to make one. What's it made of? It's um, two-dimensional. It's on a rigid board substrate. So it's on an expanded foam PVC board. It's continually evolving. Mm -hmm. And the latest version two that we just came out with is, um, I really think, the superior to you know the previous one. Before we were making it on a corrugated vinyl, and it was nice and all, but the corrugated vinyl had some issues where you would see lines in the corrugated on the top of it. With the new substrate that we're using, it's perfectly smooth and you get a nice, rich, high definition, colorful image. Roger, what are the advantages of using the 2D dummy? It's the realism that it that it has. It, it's indistinguishable from a real person when it's viewed from an aerial perspective. You could lay right beside it and you wouldn't be able to tell which one was the mannequin and which one was the living person because it's, it's that realistic, you know, especially at a higher altitudes. Mm -hmm. And also ability to have the thermal signature option available to you is helpful as well, because as drone pilots, we search for public safety with thermal cameras also. One of the unique features of the dummy is that uh, we discovered that over time, it helps the pilot to develop what's called pattern recognition, especially for departments that can't afford the real high resolution cameras. The lower resolution cameras don't give you a very clear image sometimes. So by using the 2D dummy, a pilot over time develops his or enhances his skill of uh, pattern recognition, which is critical for a drone pilot. They start to get an idea of what the profile of a body looks like. You know, we have different sizes, child, teenager, adult. And um, that's really helpful because again, especially if you're using a low resolution thermal camera, it's very helpful. So pattern recognition is one of the big benefits of using the 2D dummy. What makes the 2D dummy stand out over other methods? Here's the thing that I really think is unique about the 2D dummy. It was really designed in actual search and rescue classes. So as I mentioned, I started using it when I was training for dot drones and I would take it from class to class and I would make changes after each class. And then the next class I went to, I'd ask them, what do you think of the changes? So it was really developed during actual search and rescue training classes how well, all over the country. And I think that was really helpful, at least it was to me, in developing the 2D dummy to make it the best that it possibly could be. You know, um, getting the immediate feedback from police and firefighters who are the ones who would primarily be using the dummy was very helpful. Mm -hmm. And I found that with use of the dummy, the students were much more engaged than they typically would be. You know, when we were just searching for a, like a, a shirt and a pair of pants, it's it didn't have the same effect as it did when you're looking for a what looks like a real person, you know? So it, I think the engagement and the interest was piqued from the students by the use of the 2D dummy. And um, it made it more fun too. Does it float? Can it be used in water scenarios? Yeah. In fact, we just came out with a water rescue 2D dummy. Uh, the unique features is of that is that it, it floats. So it could be used on the surface for like surface-based search and rescues. And the nice thing is it comes with a weight that you can submerge it underwater. And it's ideal for underwater drones doing search and rescue for, say, body recovery rather than body rescue. You can also use it for if you have a dive team on your organization for a dive team training as well. So yeah, you can do both. When would you use the 2D dummy in a training exercise? It's appropriate for any time that you want to add realism to your training. You know, it, it really adds a high degree of realism. And there's been a lot of studies, you know, research papers done on the benefits of realistic training for scenario-based exercises. It seems that the studies show that the participants recall the information that they learned during the training session much better. So, you know, um, anytime you want to enhance the, the reality in the training session, it's a good tool to use. You know, it, it's not a replacement for a three-dimensional dummy, of course, but it's just um, another tool to use. You know, the 3D dummies, they're typically just canvas and they don't have any facial features or anything like that. And they're very expensive too. So, you know, my dummy, because it's two-dimensional, it's a cost-efficient training tool for a lot of smaller departments as well. How do you create the thermal imaging properties? The biggest challenge for me is trying to find the material that I could use that would emulate 
the um, thermal signature. What was happening on the training sessions is we'd go to a training session and when it came time to do the thermal training, they would take a volunteer from one of the students, right? And it was typically the youngest guy on the job who probably could have benefited from the training the most. And they would put him out in the middle of the field and he'd have to lay there for like 30, 45 minutes while the, the training session was going on. I thought, well, that's not right. This guy should be participating in the training with everybody else, you know? So I, that was a really one of the things I had to do. I knew that to make this a, a viable product that I could sell, it had to have a thermal feature. So through trial and error of maybe dozens and dozens of products, um, I finally hit upon a, a black low emissivity film that in the proper environmental conditions would give you a thermal signature. Now, that being said, proper environmental conditions, things like if the sun wasn't out or if it was raining or if it was at night, you wouldn't get a thermal signature off the dummy. So what we did to fix that was I applied a four by four patch onto the dummy. That's um, what's called the infrared thermal marker. And this is a material that's used by the military to identify friendly tanks and armored cars, et cetera. They use it for like police cars and cruisers. So we applied that on the dummies in a four by four patch. Tell us about the collaboration you have with IR Tools. When I came out with the new version two dummies that has the upgraded material instead of the, the coroplast, we now put it on a rigid substrate. Um, I knew that I wanted to have something where that thermal signature would be available 24-7 in any kind of weather. That way teams could practice at nighttime, which I know often happens. I knew of this company called IR Tools, and they're a well-known company. They've been around since, I think, 2006, and they make a proprietary film that's primarily sold to the military, and it identifies soldiers that are friendlies, so you don't shoot the wrong person. And also, like they'll use this material on tanks or military vehicles so that the helicopters using their flare or their thermal imaging camera can identify those vehicles as friendlies. So I contacted the owner, Tom Boyer of IR Tools, and we were talking. I asked, inquired about purchasing some film for my dummies so I can apply it, not just a four by four patch, but over the entire back of the dummy. That way uh, it would mimic or simulate the heat signature 24 seven. He was on board. He was really loved the idea. And um, we decided to make a collaborative 2D dummy. His proprietary film on the back, you know, which is a really advanced film. A number of patents have been issued for it. Again, it works great in any kind of weather condition, even at night. So I'm excited for that demo to be coming out uh, very shortly. So give us your assessment. How has it performed in the training environment? It's indistinguishable from a real person when viewed from an aerial perspective. When viewed from the air, it mimics the conditions that a, a UAS pilot will face during actual emergencies. And that was important to me. Again, you want to train for the situations that you'll face in real life, right? You don't want to, you don't, no one ever searches for a shirt when search and rescue. Also, there's an instructor who I work with at Dot Drones, who is a member of the FEMA search and rescue team in Boston. I sent him a couple of the dummies and they used them for training and they were really impressed with him. In fact, at that training session that they had, there was a company there called LOC8, L-O-C, the number eight. And what that company does is they make software and rescue training, and it analyzes each pixel of a photograph looking for a color of clothing that the um, victim was wearing, right? And it can do like 40,000 pictures a second, something out of crazy like that, right? So they use the 2D dummies and the locate software was able to pick them out each and every time. So again, that just speaks to the level of realism in, in those 2D dummies, how realistic they are. Besides the FEMA office, who else is using 2D dummies? We have a lot of public safety departments that are using them in emergency management departments even, you know, especially for training for hurricanes or natural disasters. So we sold a number of the dummies to police and fire departments across the country. We're at some point going to be going international as well and volunteer search and rescue organizations. And not only do I have uh, human models, but I also have dogs. Believe it or not, there's actually a huge um, amount of canine search and rescue groups out there that look for lost dogs with drones. So we have a mannequin for them as well. Um, we've got a lot of positive feedback from the dummies. People seem to be like the use of them. And what's interesting is the different ways that they're starting to use the dummies other than what they were created for, you know? Can you expand on that? One of the ways that a lot of the departments are using them now is they're using them to simulate victims for medical training. So many companies were doing that, that we actually came up with a little set of moulage stickers. And a moulage sticker is just a simulated injury. So I have these vinyl decals that you can apply to the dummy uh, that will simulate a compound fracture or a severe laceration, you know, blood spills. It just adds some realism to it for you know, medical training. Was it bought specifically for emergency medical training purposes? 
They bought them primarily because they have a drone team, but they had the thing sitting there. So they're like, well, why don't we just take this to training and use it for the medical training as well? So that's a great benefit because now the departments get more value out of the dummies. They can use them for more than just search and rescue training, which I think is valuable. And you know, um, I can see a time when you could purchase a number of these dummies and then use it for mass casualty drills. You know, it's much more cost effective than you know hiring models or or actors to play the victims, if you will. We also have a new product that we came out with called a, it's called the Crime Scene Investigation Kit. And this can be used in conjunction with the 2D Dummy or as a standalone product. And it just contains a bunch of props. It contains a blood spill, a bloody knife, a nine millimeter handgun, a 380, bag of cocaine, you know, things that you would typically find at crime scenes. And because a few studies have come out um, speaking to the efficiency and use of drones to document and investigate crime scenes for law enforcement. Again, it would assist law enforcement officers that are drone pilots to increase and enhance their pattern recognition. It'll train them to find small objects with a drone. Um, and again, try to make it fun too. So we created a little game where each prop has a number on the back, a point value. And you know you could try to, whoever gets the most point kind of gets the bragging rights for the day or something. Again, I, I try to make the training fun. Um, when I was a firefighter, I always enjoyed training when the instructors added some kind of a fun like maybe a competitive nature or a game component to it. I was more engaged and I found the training much more fun to be at. Anything about the 2D dummy that we missed that you want to make sure you highlight? One of the benefits of the 2D dummy is that it aids in emotional resilience. And this is something that I learned about while reading research papers on drones in law enforcement. And emotional resilience is by, it's like desensitizing yourself to certain things that you might see during your routine work as a law enforcement officer. So what my goal is, is to have a 2D dummy that can be used for, say, active shooter training in school. And I can make really graphic 2D dummies with, you know, that shows not only graphic images, but expressions on the faces uh, that simulate death and, you know, again, graphic in nature, right? Um, Now, people might say, well, why why would you want to make something like that? And the reason why I want to make something is because I just feel that there's so much stress in law enforcement, being a law enforcement officer nowadays, and anything that we can do to reduce that, I think is helpful. So the studies indicate that by having repeated exposure to images that are graphic like that, they build up their emotional resilience. And when they see it in person, you know, it's less impactful on them. My brother's in a corrections officer, and we've made some prototypes for him at the jail. They have a lot of new correction officers starting out. And using the 2D dummies in training to see how it affects the young recruits. Um, Again, so we have a neck ligature dummy. So it's a person hanging because that's something that they encounter from time to time. And again, it's all to help with that emotional resilience. That's pretty interesting. I've also made some what's called a diversion dummy. And what that is, is it's it's somebody who might be laying on a field, but they're not lost or they're not missing. It's It's to help train the drone pilot to make decisions on whether this is the person that they're looking for that needs rescue, or is it just somebody who's, you know, who's out there, maybe the person went missing near a, near a park or a, a area where people will go running. So again, it's the diversion dummy was just to confuse the, the pilot and determining if that's the, the victim that they're searching for or not. Is there a benefit to creating a 3D version of the dummy? Yeah, like a 3D dummy has its benefits for sure. Again, if realism is what you're looking for, the 2D dummy is, is what you have. But if, if actual, say, if you wanted to do like below grade rescue, where you actually want to practice moving the um, the mannequin out of a hole or out of a ditch or, you know, a below grade rescue, the 3D dummy is where you would want to go. But again, you know, you can use them in conjunction with each other as well. I know it's not just a, a either or. Um, they could be used in conjunction for, for certain applications. Let's switch gears to talk about the company. First, what challenges did you have to overcome to get things started? There's been a lot of challenges and a lot of trial and error. Research and development was a big, was a big one for us. Um, I, I never really thought of it as a, as a business. And what happened was, again, I, I really made it just so I could have a better training aid for the classes that I was putting on with Dot Drones. I wanted to you know, make those classes you know, more enhanced and for myself and for my other instructors. So just through the continual development of Companies started asking me if I could sell them one of them, and I really realized that I was onto something. So it was through the refinement in the, in, in the final product. It's a brand new segment in the rescue mannequin industry, and I'm pretty proud of that. One of the d- most difficult things that I've done so far regarding the 2D dummies was filing the provisional patent. I did it all myself, 
And it was a lot of work. But again, there's so many resources out there on YouTube and books available. And I just absorbed all of them. And I wrote the Perusional Patent myself. And it was pretty impressive when I was done. But it took a lot of mental uh, work to get that done. So we are patent pending. And um, hopefully, we'll, we'll get a, a utility patent at some point. When was the official start of the company? I'm located in Florida, and um, I registered the business uh, last July, but we really didn't start selling until maybe around November. You know, from July to November, I was just working out some kinks just to get the final dummies ready. I was figuring out how I was going to ship them. Some of them are larger sizes. So um, we came up with a couple of pretty neat ways to save money on shipping, and also it's beneficial to the people that um, who receive it. The larger dummies, the life-size one, like the we call it flat mat. He was our original one. He's like 60 something inches long, 65 inches long, and it's really expensive to ship it. So we just put a little hinge in the middle of it and it folds in half and it's really convenient for shipping and for storage. And because the hinge is there, you know, you can use it in different, you could sit him upright if you wanted to. So it's kind of a dual purpose. It saves money in shipping and it's um, easier to store for the, the customer. How are the dummies made? I have a print shop who makes the base for me. And then once the base comes in, I'll add the additions. We're experimenting now with articulating arms, attaching with magnets. The benefit of that is twofold. Number one, by articulating the arms, you can position them in different ways, which I think is, again, it's all about getting value out of the dummy and being able to use it for different ways. And also by having an arm that's attached with like a magnet, you can remove the arm and then we're going to have some arms that like may simulate broken bones, compound fractures, amputations that you could snap on. So you can use it if you wanted to create a scenario where the person had um, traumatic injuries, it would be just an easy change of the arm. You don't have to buy a whole new dummy. You just buy the the arm that's damaged. Do you have any employees? So I'm just a solo entrepreneur. It's just myself, but I do employ a lot of freelancers. Um, I have a freelance graphic designer. I use a, utilize a printer that's nearby. I hope to be hiring salespeople in the near future, but for right now, it's just me, but hopefully that'll change soon. So you really epitomize the homegrown garage business. What advice would you offer to other entrepreneurs? I got to tell you, one of the things that's really benefited my company, and I probably wouldn't be able to have it if it wasn't for the fact that there's so many services out there now that will automate a lot of the things that an entrepreneur do. So as a solo entrepreneur, you know, I can automate a lot of the business, everything from, you know, scheduling my social media posts to even packaging and fulfillment at some point in time. So taking advantage of of those apps and websites that um, have services that can alleviate some of the workload for you as a business, that's really helpful for me. Even AI technology has been really helpful. I I think AI technology is going to be the next big wave for public safety UAS. I really look at AI as not a bad thing, but but a benefit. When you have a drone that's looking for somebody and not the pilot itself, it's very difficult to fly the drone and look at the monitor you know, for the victim at the same time. In fact, we don't encourage that at all. Typically, we have an image analyst who stands next to or near the, the pilot looking at a separate monitor, or you're taking photographs and they're being reviewed by an, an image analyst. So again, I really think AI technology is really going to play a big role in um, drone use for public safety. There have been a lot of changes since you started training drone pilots eight years ago. What are the biggest challenges facing pilots today? In relation to public safety, I think the biggest challenge there is practice time. I don't think the departments are giving the the drone teams enough time to practice. You really want to become familiar with the drone. You know, people will say, oh, it's easy to fly a drone, isn't it? You know, and it is easy to fly a drone. Sure. I mean, right. You know how easy it is to fly a drone. But when things go wrong, they go wrong fast and they go wrong. They can have severe consequences. So practicing and getting and just preparing and flying the drone, becoming aware of how the drone operates. I really think that's one of the biggest things that departments need to work on is just becoming familiar on how the drone operates, how the software works. When I was a firefighter, one of the things that they did when I was a probie was they would put a blindfold on you and they would take you over to the pump panel and they would they would name like a, the, find the discharge valve. You'd have to reach up to the discharge valve without looking because there might be times where you're in pitch black and you had to find that discharge valve, right? Well, I kind of taken that experience when I was a probational firefighter and moved it into the drone world where I think a drone pilot should be able to identify every switch and button on his control station without having to look at it. Again, when something goes wrong, you want to instantly have that muscle memory where you go to that, whether it's taking the drone out of GPS mode, if you have a flyaway, or you know if you have a major malfunction, certainly your familiarization with the drone itself is going to save the drone injuries on the ground. What do you think is the biggest mistake that pilots make? I hate to say this, but um, I can't speak of, for public safety departments, but 
I've had some experiences with um, commercial operators, and I know for a fact that they're not following the rules, especially like in Lance authorization zones. So I think that maybe adherence to the law would be a little bit. And again, I don't know why you wouldn't. It, they make it really easy, but um, I'll give you a, a quick example. I recently bought I bought a house a couple of years ago, the one I'm in now at Naples, and I was in a zero altitude Lance grid. So that means you, you couldn't fly without a air authorization from the FAA. Yet they were drone photographs in the real estate listing, you know. Mm-hmm. And when I spoke to the real estate agent about it, she couldn't have cared less. She really didn't even want to listen to me. So mm-hmm. um, I think that's all going to change, though, because as you know, we have the onset of remote ID coming. It was supposed to take effect the 16th. They pushed it off for six months, bought us some time. But you know, with remote ID, you're not going to be able to fly in places where you shouldn't be flying anymore. So what's next for 2D dummies? For short-term plans, again, we're going to be making a lot of, of accessory products, you know, like similar to our drone crime scene kit. We're going to be coming out with a, a launch pad and landing pad that has uh, on the back of it is a like a bullseye for practicing dispatching items from a drone. So you know how we drop things during search and rescue missions to water bottles or radios or medication. So it's like a target that these public safety drone operators can practice getting proficient at dropping things from. Uh, Long term, what I'd like to do is I'd really like to look into augmented reality. So I have a voice box now that um, I'm working with that as you approach the drone, it'll play a recorded message. So it might start moaning or calling for help. And again, that's something that I would like to see used with the law enforcement drones for active shooter training. You know, in the short term, just continually making realistic products for all types of training, not just for UAS, but medical training or just regular rescue training. Roger, is there anything that we missed that we should talk about? So one of the things that's important to me is when I started this business was the way that I wanted to run the business was I wanted to run it how I would like to be treated as a customer. And one of the big things that we do at 2D Dummies is we really emphasize customer satisfaction and support. We don't just sell you the dummy and that's it. We have tools that we continually offer for free to our customers, such as, you know, I made some mission briefing reports that can add for scenario-based training. The training officer could read it out to the group. You know, it sounds like, hello team, we're here today to, you know, find a missing victim, a missing the child went missing last night. You know, also, I can't stand voicemail. So we primarily at 2D Dummies just do text messaging and our customers love it. They can just send us a text message. Um, we get back to them, you know, within an hour or two and we handle 90% of our customer service issues through text messaging. And it really, I like it. Our clients like it. Um, I did some research and like 90% of customers prefer text messaging over making phone calls. You know, you make a phone call, you have to spend 15 minutes getting to the right voice box. So I didn't want that. And again, I really wanted to um, focus on customer satisfaction and support. We really stand behind our, our product and we want to continually support our customers so they can get the most value and use out of the 2D dummy. How does bringing this product to the marketplace make you feel? It makes me feel fantastic. I mean, I I love being able to not only help the departments, but know that I'm helping people out there as well. You know, I miss being a firefighter and getting that satisfaction from helping people. I mean, I really loved every day being a firefighter, but after 25 years, I was done, you know. So this is a great business that allows me to interact with members of the fire department and police officers as well. And to stay in that world of public safety and to know that that something that I invented could help save some lives, um, there's, there's no better feeling than that, you know. Are you still working with Dart drones? Yeah, I'm still working with Dart drones. I've been there since, um, again, I was one of their first instructors that they hired. Fortunately, the time that I got hired before Part 107, you had to be a Part 61 pilot. That's a that's a manned aircraft pilot. And I had my sport pilot for weight shift control trikes. So I, I'm still a weight shift control trike pilot. I still work for Dart drones. I primarily teach um, the Part 107 prep class for them, but I haven't done very much public safety training I was the co-creator of a lot of their public safety programs, as well as co-creator of the Pop 107 prep program. So having done that, those are being still being taught all over the world. You know, they've taught the programs in Dubai, all over in different locations. And to, you know, know that I, I contributed to that. I'm proud of that as well. And for my final question, Roger, what message would you like to leave regarding the future of the drone industry? I think the drone industry, especially in public safety sector, is only going to get much bigger. I think that um, the citizens should not worry so much and just embrace the technology because it's fantastic. I mean, what we're going to be able to do with drones, 
the technology is improving at such a rapid rate that who knows what they're going to be able to do with the drones in a year or two. You know, you can get a waiver now for beyond visual line of sight operations for public safety workers. So that means the drone's flying out of the sight of the operator. And that's huge. I mean, that's a big plus. Not only that, the fire departments and police departments are going to be finding different and unique ways to use the drone that they never thought of before. And, you know, hopefully we can help support them when those different applications are discovered. That's it for episode 406 of the Drone Radio Show. I hope you enjoyed hearing from Roger Hall of 2D Dummies. I want to thank Roger for taking the time to speak with me. If you want to learn more about 2D Dummies or want to connect with Roger, check out the webpage at 2ddummies.com. If you like the Drone Radio Show, then please subscribe and share. Write a glowing review on iTunes. And if you're able... Donate to keep the podcast going. Go to DroneRadioShow.com slash donate. And thanks for listening. Your support means a lot to me, and I hope you'll listen to more episodes of the Drone Radio Show podcast to hear how others are using drones for business, fun, and research. For the Drone Radio Show, I'm Randy Goers. This has been the Drone Radio Show podcast. More information on today's show can be found on our website at www.droneradioshow.com. If you're using drone technology for business, fun, or research, and would like to share your experience on the show, please visit our website and fill out a guest appearance application. And don't forget to follow us on your favorite social media channels.